my name is Barrett Hogue. I'm a principal engineer at Nordstrom. I'm joined by Nils Janssen. Um, he is an engineering manager at Nordstrom. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about, as you might imagine, go at Nordstrom. Um, so a little bit of context and history. Uh, a lot of times <coughs> when I'm talking to someone, say I work at Nordstrom, they get this really confused look on their face. And they're like, the department store? Um, a lot of times I get the joke like, oh, do you work in ladies' shoes? Um, mostly I do not. Uh, <coughs> but you know, at, at, at its roots, Nordstrom started out as a department store. That's kind of where we came from. Um, we do have 120 Nordstrom like full line stores, what we call them. And then there's also 200 Nordstrom racks. So we, we have a lot of brick and mortar, which is kind of important for our context, because that's a, an interesting aspect. Um, there's a little bit more than that, though. <coughs> so, you know, we've got these brick and mortar stores. We've got Nordstrom. We've got a, a nice maple leaf up there because we, we're in Canada now. Um, so we are international. Um, we've got racks. And, you know, shockingly, we also have websites. Uh, Nordstrom.com, NordstromRack.com. Oh, look. Um, we have excellent apps if you've ever used them. Um, <coughs> iOS and Android. Uh, they work pretty well. Nils and I used to kind of work on them a little bit, so I have to plug them. Um, and then additionally, uh, people may be familiar with Trunk Club. That's one of those things where you can, <coughs> you know, every month you get a bunch of clothes. Uh, if you like them, you keep them. If you don't, you send them back, uh, which is kind of an interesting, like, dual channel type thing. Like, we send it, but it's also virtual. Um, so we, we do all of these things. Um, one of the things that we really believe in is customer service. So <coughs> it's kind of important that we can provide customers, like, really good customer service, and technology enables that. Oh, technology enables personalized service. Hey, here's a lot of things that we do. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> it's just kind of to give a context, like even though we started as brick and mortar, technology is actually really important to us uh, now. Um, we recently introduced this thing that's like reserve online, try and store, which you can you know, go on your app, say I want to try this, you get to the store, it's there. And that's the kind of thing that we're trying to enable. Um, just a, l a little bit of context. Uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of times you hear like bad retail numbers. Um, <coughs> Nordstrom last year we did uh, more than 14 billion. Um, almost three billion of that was in e-commerce, and we call that out just because you know that's almost that's more than 20 percent of our revenue, and um, you know it's it's not a small amount of money. So um, things are still going pretty well. <coughs> um, so talked a little bit about oh why technology is important to us, uh, and trust me we're going to get to go. Don't worry. Um, <coughs> We have 2,500 people in technology. <coughs> That's you know not a small amount. Uh, and you know traditionally we started out as retail. Uh, now we've got you know a lot of stuff that we sell online. Um, as a result, we've got a lot of different technology stacks. Uh, <coughs> a lot of the retail back office systems were traditionally Java. Like we are actually required to use Java to interface with those. Um, all the stores have customized POSs to allow us to do certain things, um, but that's a, a lot of stuff that now we own. Um, historically, all of the stuff on the, the website was written in .NET, um, which actually drives a lot of the stuff, or drives some of the stuff we talk about later. Um, you know, it worked, it worked great, it, it worked all right, um, but we are kind of uh, looking at some of that now. Um, and then more recently, um, the front-end stuff has all been done in Node and React. Uh, so we've kind of got all the stuff that's out there, some of it's you know, really historical, really old, you know, 20, 30 year old stuff. Um, and, uh, well, we, it can't all go away. Um, <coughs> talked a little bit uh, about monoliths earlier. Um, what we kind of have, you know, because of all this history is a lot of balls of mud. I don't know if everyone's familiar with the term ball of mud, but the theory is, uh, you know, your software system as it kind of grows, you get all these crufty interfaces, like you just end up with this big ball of mud. Um, <coughs> We don't just have like one ball of mud. We have a lot of balls of mud. <laughs> there is a lot of mud. Um, <coughs> so you know, the website has its own view of all this data, and it's got its own database. Um, it's got its own support team. It's got all this stuff. And then you've got all these back office systems. You know, tracking inventory, tracking um, you know a lot of product data. They've got all their their view of data. And each of these is like grown organically. But after 20 years, you've got a lot of mud. Um, <coughs> You know, uh, additionally, because it's kind of all isolated, there's all these balls of mud talking to each other. It's really confusing, and there's a lot of stuff. Uh, there's there's a lot of chance for optimization. Um, so that that's where we were, um, and where we're kind of going. Well, talked a little bit about uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about breaking up the monolith. Uh, we're not busting everything at once. Um, 
But <coughs> it's kind of an important thing, like especially as we're trying to scale our technology, we need to break down into microservices, you know, cloud, buzzword. Um, <coughs> Uh, so <coughs> that's like one of our main goals, and uh, you know how does Go enable that? Uh, so um, they talked about a lot of the great great reasons for using Go performance. Um, you know some of the stuff that we really like so far. Um, you know some of the opinions in Go that are there. Uh, it makes things easier when we're trying to spin up new teams. Um, Go tooling is really good. Uh, I also talked about that. Uh, we really like how out of the box, we can do a lot of things that it used to be. It would take us a lot, a long time to, to get going with. Um, and uh, we kind of feel like it enforces better design patterns. Uh, you know, once you, once you start talking about concurrency, uh, it's, re it's really useful. Um, that's, you know, a very quick view of why we, uh, like we're, what we're trying to achieve, um, where we're going. Um, so, uh, <coughs> This is kind of our current state at a very high level. Nils is going to draw and drive down into like more details. But um, so about a year ago, Nils and I were working together on the uh, mobile API team, which builds APIs for mobile devices. Um, <coughs> and uh, we were we were actually in a .NET stack. Uh, we were CI/CD. It would take us you know 45 minutes to an hour to deploy. It was all right, um, but uh, it wasn't really giving us kind of the velocity we needed. Uh, supportability was difficult. Um, <coughs> So we kind of looked at what was out there, you know, evaluated um, Go, evaluated, you know, we, we kind of looked at Java, but because we had been doing C Sharp, we kind of, uh, I don't know. Um, and we decided, okay, we're going to try using Go, see how it goes. Um, and uh, that was a year ago after, you know, almost a little less than a year, uh, we actually had something in production. Um, based on that, we've actually kind of fanned out, uh, spread out uh, to people. Um, created new teams based on kind of what we learned. Um, so that service has been live uh, almost a year. Uh, it's been going really well. Um, and, and from just like one team using Go, um, some other teams actually stumbled upon it uh, because of things that they were doing. But from that like very small seed, um, <coughs> uh, we now have like more, uh, this is just a, a sample, but we've got like five like really big teams using uh, Go at Nordstrom. Um, orchestration services, which is what Nils and I are now a part of, uh, is a really fancy way of saying APIs. They call APIs like we do orchestration. Um, mobile APIs kind of talked about. Uh, Kubernetes, we, we do have a team that's doing Kubernetes um, to sort of host our infrastructure. Um, as one might imagine, as a result, they also use Go. Uh, <coughs> There's a team that kind of does like organizational data, telling us uh, data about our stores, as an example. Um, they're kind of interesting because they're built on top of Java as well. Um, and then uh, availability. Um, availability is, you know, can we, is something available to sell or not? Uh, <coughs> the kind of top four are all in bold um, because they're actually all in production. So a year ago, we had nothing in production. We had virtually no Go experience. Um, Within a year, we've now got all of these teams using Go. These are all in production. We've got more coming down the pipe. Um, so that's uh, a little bit about like some sort of how we've introduced Go. Uh, additionally, some of the problems we get to solve are really interesting. Uh, uh, I said sometimes fun, sometimes uh, well, engineering problems are always fun, but sometimes some sound a lot more fun than others. Um, interacting with shared systems because uh, we've got sort of this like big legacy stuff out there. Um, we, like, you know, as you're peeling away the, the layers of the monolith, you can't just rewrite everything. Um, we still have to interact with those systems. Um, not everything is modern, so uh, .NET Windows Communication Foundation, uh, for those not super familiar with it, is, you know, Microsoft's way of doing SOAP 10 years ago. Um, <coughs> we have to rely on that to an extent, uh, so we have to interact with systems like that. Um, uh, s structured logging and context, uh, you know, we do also want to be able to uh, look at calls throughout the stack. You know, see, okay, it came in here, it fanned out to all of these places. Um, that's the sort of thing that, that we've been working on, um, so that you know, for supportability to really give that special customer experience, like we can track down what's going on. Um, on the scalability side, uh, Nordstrom uh, is a little bit interesting in that we do fulfillment both from uh, fulfillment centers uh, and actually from the store. So if <coughs> We can't ship something if, if we're out of it at a fulfillment center, but a store has enough of it. Hey, we'll actually ship it from the store. That becomes a very interesting problem to solve because, um, you know, 
thinking of something available in the store, well, it's out on the floor. Um, maybe it's available, maybe it's not. Uh, you kind of have to like sit and wait. Um, it, it provides interesting problems to solve uh, from like a scalability perspective. Um, and then also calculating what we sell to customers on the fly, that's like an extra step. Not just what do we have available to sell, but based on who, who you are, what can we sell you, or what should we sell you based on who you are. Um, and then uh, additionally, Dev, uh, DevOps, um, you know, with, with these balls of mud that we kind of had, each one had its own support team, had its own deployment methodology. Um, <coughs> we believe that it's really important for us to own the system. Uh, you know, I th we think that that's the right thing to do. Um, so you know, we've been pushing to uh, support everything that we build, and so we also get to build the infrastructure that's building our apps. Um, uh, yeah, and it, I, th I think at this point, uh, Nils is going to drill down a little bit into like what uh, some things we're actually building. So. Good evening. So um, I'm Nils. I'm a manager at Nordstrom for a team at building Go servers, and and we deploy, yeah, every day, more or less, when we have stuff to take out there. But uh, we're gonna dr drill down in more what the different teams are doing with Go right now at Nordstrom. So we have the Kubernetes team, and for them, using Go was pretty natural because they're in Go code most of the day when they're looking into how their stack is working. And uh, they think they actually have provided at least one pull request to Kubernetes to g get what they need. But also they write tooling around it and uh, they have open sourced a uh, few small Go language, uh, Go um, projects in that's written in Go. And I think they are for if you deploy with their in Kubernetes stack, you can add a, like a description to your application and this tooling I have wrote would actually start logging and put metrics into um, uh, Prometheus without you doing anything. So it's the kind of plumbing that they have written then that we're gonna start using more and more. And that's, they're gonna help us going from that 15 to 20 minute deployment time to hopefully down to five minutes, so we can the pull request approved and it goes straight out to production. So, and uh, we also have the mobile API team and they taking all these services that sits behind us and aggregates data and take the data and make it so it fits for the mobile ap apps. It could be like taking away data or orchestrating and because then mobile apps have a little bit different, um, if you will, the people use them differently and the layout and everything is different, so you don't, a little bit different data. But they have to talk to these different systems that have different kind of, they implement their different data, different data sources. So we have RPC Java style, that's SOAP. We have the WCF data from Microsoft and we have the regular SOAP WCF, we have the JSONs WCF, and also we have the WCF binary encoding. And I don't know if you're familiar with the binary encoding. It's basically, if you hear talk about the protobuf, it's kind of Microsoft did 10 years ago with basically taking a SOAP document and binary encode it, so it takes smaller space on the pipe. And there's no library in Go to read this data. But so the team ran into a problem when they had to get data from a system that only exposed the data from a WCF binary encoded system. And they wanted to write the service in Go. So they, on their spare time, started a little bit and actually wrote uh, a codec, if you will, for this the binary WCF. So it's open source. So if you, somebody at your company tells you that you can't use Go because you have a w legacy WCF service that uses binary encoding, there is a project for it. And uh, so they took the approach, so they have, there's a specification, they have tests for all the cases in the specification, but they already implement in what they needed to get their stuff to work, right? So, so if you use it and you come across something that doesn't work, just implement it in a pull request and get the test to work and then you should, kind of build it over time. So that's kind of 
should ask these guys to come and talk about their project. <laughs> it's kind of pretty interesting. And then they have the orchestration services but that sits. So the architecture in Nordstrom may basically have data services that sits at the bottom. There could be databases, could be files, or whatever data is. And then you build a lightweight service on top of that. And the only thing that you do is expose the data. On top of there, you have orchestration services that can call to data services and call within the same layer to build bis business logic, basically. So, and that's because we want to have the same business logic no matter what the channel you have. So if you're mobile, if you're web, the business logic happens in the or orchestration layer. And then on top of that, you basically have the applications and they call multiple orchestration services. And uh, in this layer, that's where we have the most Go teams because that's kind of building up this as we're breaking up the different monoliths that have this business logic. So the business logic can be living in s separate places in the company that the mobile had this, their business logic, the web had their business logic. So we, that logic has been moved up to the orchestration layers. And that's why a lot of Go is there because it's kind of the newer stuff. And uh, so we have some teams kind of using Go and that's have led to kind of the organic grow, if you will, of the Go Kit or the Nordstrom Kit. So it's, if you're familiar with Go Kit, it has some plumbing to do microservices. And we kind of have the same problems, but there are some things that are Nordstrom specific that drives us to do our own stuff. So we have our own logger, and it seems like everybody writes their own logger anyway in Go, because there's tons of them out there. But we have a, like a defined schema we really need to adhere to, but Java applications have and .NET applications have, so we can suck in these logs and do data munching on them. And uh, we wrote the Go HTTP. That's a basically a r decorated HTTP client that provides us with metrics. So if you want to write your service, you just do this, and you get metrics on how long call, how long the call took, and you get logging and stuff like that. And of course, we've got middleware. Everybody needs some middleware. And we have, so all our services have basically the same middleware, and that's logging, metrics. We have a response annotation, so we don't bubble up any internal errors. So once it goes through and comes up, then we just return something went wrong. And, uh, and panic handler, so if something happens during that request, we don't shut down the whole service. We just yeah, that's, that customer maybe not get the response, but at least the next one will. So, and these kind of middleware and the Nordstrom kit grows organically. A different team owns different parts of it, but we work in an open source kind of culture, and the Go community is kind of strong right now, and a lot of things going on. So, these packages evolve over time, the, and the, the different services have kind of different versions of them, but that's okay as long as they keep on moving forward, we were happy with that. And uh, since we're in the time now when different teams come in and different, we're breaking things up, we need new teams come on board and get started quickly. And we kind of have slowly, then, or quickly the last two years, moved to a DevOps kind of mindset. And we want to continue that to make it easy. You shouldn't really be thinking about it. So. We have kind of a service template that have everything you need to get the Go project up and running. It will have logging, metrics, and all that kind of stuff just out of the box, and you can deploy it, and you run. And so when a new team comes in, they spin up a Hello World project. They create the plumbing for delivery, so a CI, and we usually actually go straight to prod too. Even if there's no consumers, we push it out to the product environment to just get that feel for how everything works. And, and in the beginning, it's a hello world out in prod, but then you implement your first business logic and then you push it out to prod. And then, so you, then the team starts to have that mindset from the get-go. So. And now, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer. Yeah. And the question was, is the team deployed to production themselves? Currently, yes, we own our scripts and our script for like the deployment and everything. So that's 
we have the Kubernetes team will just supply kind of the Kubernetes infrastructure and the cloud team supports the cloud infrastructure, but we, how we deploy is up to us right now. Anything else? At this point, no. I think we're just getting going with that. But so, uh, John here has a question. Uh, so, so one more thing about Kubernetes. I think uh, Barry mentioned uh, for us, we have a both uh, we have a cloud infrastructure. We also have a lot of service actually running in the store. So we can just uh, use a hundred percent cloud solution. This is uh, what Kubernetes actually gives us. So we can actually use the same deployment uh, process and same infra infrastructure, both in uh, in the cloud and actually in the physical store. All right. Barrett will have a question too. Anyone for Barrett? All right. Okay, there Barrett. Yeah, um, so uh, we, we kind of have a, a general schema that's uh, used throughout Nordstrom that uh, does things like, you know, context ID so that we can track everything everywhere because, you know, right now we're in Go, but we do call services that are in Java and um, uh, C Sharp. Uh, we have all those dependencies that we call, so the expectation is every service kind of adheres to that format. Um, uh, then it actually goes to either like Splunk, um, where we can Splunk, uh, or in the future we're actually going to use like Elasticsearch um, uh, to, to search for that. Um, maybe some kinesis streams as well to to go through it, tie it together. Cool. Um, then the obligatory, hey, we might be hiring. We might have an email address or obviously talk to us after this if you'd like. There's also LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.